The job is a constellation of a number of tasks. And so even if AI can do one task much better than a human, there are other tasks that are, are there and available. How can we go about having a more rational approach to this? Is there a kind of economic story or, or whatever has been found out in the past that could help us kind of make uh, some more reasonable predictions of what is happening with employment and artificial intelligence? Well, I think the, the past actually gives us a, a lot of comfort. We have had technological changes that have had massive impacts on employment. We used to have 80% of people involved, employed in the agricultural sector. Now that we're down to a few percent, we don't have mass unemployment. We actually didn't have mass unemployment. <laughs> that transition happened. It took some time, but the uh, people moved on and found other uh, jobs. I think also with regard to technology, it's very, very hard for a technology, a new technology like artificial intelligence to replace a job. Um, because a job is a constellation of a number of tasks. And so even if AI can do one task much better than a human, there are other tasks that are, are there and available. And we've seen this happen as well. You know, the profession of bookkeeping has in the last 30 years been completely wiped out. Uh, but we have no songs for the lost bookkeepers. Why? Because bookkeepers, one of the things they were doing was modeling and keeping data and other things in something that now is replaced by an Excel spreadsheet. But the other thing was, they were the very best people to be using the Excel spreadsheets. So the transition occurred, bookkeeping was no longer what they did, but they ended up doing something that was part of bookkeeping before, but didn't have enough time to spend on it productively. And so I think we're going to see a lot of those transitions. Now, there are places in which people have taken, for instance, in manufacturing and maybe in call centers or something like that, they're going to take an approach that might actually take away those jobs uh, entirely. And we've seen those forces before. I still think it's the case that they're not the best jobs. Uh, they're jobs that people uh, take at the margin. And, and what we've seen in the past is there's always something else to do. Where they're going to be more painful is if they require people to move and be dislocated. But I don't think this is that fast moving that we won't be able to adjust. Do you think or anticipate that there is going to be a need to re-educate or people to re-educate themselves within their own lifetime? I think uh, there has been uh, reason to re-educate in your own lifetime for a number of decades now. You know, I think this has always been an ongoing process. The hard part has always been picking what the next thing to educate yourself is. So it's like most people are able to do it on the job or as part of their work uh, and, and be absorbing and, and having that re-education. When you uh, lose your job and you need to choose a new sector, et cetera, that is much more difficult. And we haven't solved that problem yet. That's been ongoing. There is no magic way of education. We, we have enough trouble educating young people who uh, at least are more of a blank slate and are easier to teach than older people. I think as usual, the best thing that we could likely do is make people more flexible in that earlier education, uh, rather than expecting them to stick with it throughout the whole of their lives.